Paul from CETA, thank you very much for being here. Uh, it was a great pleasure for the End Navigation Commission uh, to have you uh, uh, with us today for the third Air Navigation Commission talk in C-Talk. Um, but, you know, we had a, a, a big discussion about cyber security and data, um, but we still have some questions I would like to ask you now. Mm -hmm. um, but first of all, uh, did you enjoy engaging in discussion with the Air Navigation Commission and the topics discussed uh, reflect uh, the current situation in terms of cyber security? Yeah, um, first and foremost, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me with the team here for this um, very engaging uh, discussion uh, today. I definitely enjoy when we talk about data, we talk about AI and cybersecurity in um, our industry, that it's um, aviation, uh, air navigation. I think uh, it was very, very um, um, useful and uh, thought-provoking discussion because this, there were real questions about what we should do, what is happening, what is, uh, what is, is in plan, and uh, how uh, a company as uh, CIRA, we're dealing with uh, uh, airport and airline, um, ground handler, we're dealing with a lot of information, real-time information, uh, air traffic control, how can we make sure that we're leveraging and we can share uh, our learning and our knowledge on cybersecurity, I think, was very, very useful. And uh, the uh, diversity of experts in the room, diversity of questions, was uh, uh, very insightful and uh, thoughtful. Great. Um, it is certain that attack will happen. Uh, in cases where communications are under attack, uh, how is CETA in ensuring that uh, communication systems uh, uh, maintain their resilience during events like an attack. Yeah, absolutely. Um, our goal is that there's no uh, zero attack, but uh, we have a team of uh, cybersecurity experts that monitor, and that's the, their goal is to uh, detect, uh, protect, and also react in case of attack. So uh, how do we maintain communication? All our system, we always have what I, I explained during the meeting, redundancy where we have a plan B to make sure that if there was an issue, we have a uh, disaster recovery plan that we put in place immediately. We have a team that react, will react to that to ensure that the business will continue. And depending on the severity of uh, the attack, we, uh, we have uh, several options that we put in place. But there is a dedicated team 24-7 that's working on making sure that our data, our system, data from our partner and our uh, product where data and, uh, and information flowing uh, remain secure because uh, security, cyber security and safety is front and center for us. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the increased sharing of digital information, uh, identifying and authenticating the source of that information becomes uh, more and more critical to, to reduce uh, spoofing. Uh, what is uh, CETA doing about this? Yeah, that's true. I, I mean, that's the challenge today. Once we say, and I mentioned this during the, 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 the discussion, that uh, when we embrace the digital revolution, at the same time, you're getting exposed to uh, the external world. And at the same time, there has been a lot of changes where some people without a great deal of technical expertise they had access to tools and solutions. And uh, the, the spoofing is a, one of those. I think we try to do a lot of education. We're doing a lot of education of our employee, of our resources to recognize and to be proactive. And uh, our cybersecurity team and the security team, they are keeping the entire uh, organization, the entire company informed about known spoofing or to come spoofing, and also we work with some uh, partner, outside partner that keep us uh, very well uh, informed uh, in regard to the spoofing. So we have a, a proactive approach, a uh, reactive approach with the team that's monitoring, detecting, and taking action, and also the collaboration, the collaborative approach to address the spoofing. And we hope that, you know, with uh, the combination of those uh, 
three uh, areas will be able to uh, handle that. And we've been handling some of those uh, uh, very, uh, uh, very, very strongly. Uh, as you know, the, the Energy Commission is the technical body of this organization. We consider and recommend standard and recommended practices, uh, the procedure for innovation services. Do you think it is time for an international aviation standard on cybersecurity? Yeah, I, I think uh, it's a very good question. And um, the standards are definitely important, or I think, because air navigation is not a region base because we fly across the world, you know, across the globe. So getting the standard will help, will benefit uh, the entire industry uh, and also, more importantly, the passenger, the users. Because if we're applying some standard here and then in another country, they're not doing the same thing, we uh, have a high risk of failure. So getting some standard and the global collaboration, I think it's a, it's a very important move that if that's something that uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the ANC is envisioned doing, I think would be a, a great move and very important uh, step ahead on, in terms of security. Very well. Uh, Jean Paul, do you regret being here with us today? Not at all. I think uh, I'm just waiting for the next invitation. I mean, this topic is about collaboration and working with uh, industry body like you and the, the Air Navigation Commission, I think I'll be more than happy to come back to discuss other issues and issues around cybersecurity, around data science, around artificial intelligence in aviation. Uh, I'll be more than happy and I really enjoy meeting with you, with your team and uh, my team as well. We're very happy and uh, thrilled to be here for that uh, uh, exciting exchange that we had this afternoon. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thanks for having me.